In this episode, we will look at the implementation of a direct cyclic fatigue analysis in uh, the CLS specimen as discussed earlier. And therefore, the first thing we want to do is change back the specimen to be um, loaded with forces rather than with an enforced displacement. So the first thing we want to do is we go to the boundary conditions and we deactivate the enforced displacement here so the edge can move freely. The second thing is we want to reactivate the force which is already done here and this force will be edited to 700 newtons as we want to load the structure to a amplitude of the minimum of 700 newtons and the maximum of 7 kilonewtons. And this, the first step will exhibit a force of 700 newtons, so 700 newtons for the force here. Um, the interaction module is changed in that way that the coupling is re-established. And now we are pretty back to the model we discussed in, uh, in, in uh, the video one. So as we want to implement a amplitude, we first have to make our mind how this amplitude will look like. And we can do that by checking um, Excel. In this case, uh, I plotted uh, the function of a periodic amplitude function as implemented in Abacus here with the amplitude value. And this value is gained by a row of cosine and sine um, Fourier terms and pretty much reduces to the initial amplitude and the factor for, uh, I think, the cosine. It's the sine. It's a sine. And um, the initial time, as well as the circular frequency which in this case is uh, just 2 pi times the frequency, and frequency in this case is 5 hertz. So, for implementing this amplitude, which looks like this, um, 5 hertz, and here, one, one, one uh, cycle is 0 point, uh, 0 0.2 seconds long, and on this case we will ramp it up with a linear static step to 700 newtons, go up there to 7 kilonewtons and uh, right there to 700 newtons again. Okay, um, this amplitude will be implemented as it is here. So this amplitude cycles between 0 0.1 and 1. The multiplication with 700 or 7 kilonewtons is done with uh, the loading module. So to implement the amplitude we simply go on amplitudes, double click it here and check periodic, periodic here. Go on continue and now you have uh, the parameters as discussed in the Excel table. So the first thing is the circular frequency, which is which is uh, thirty one uh, comma uh, point four two. The starting time is zero point zero five. The initial amplitude is zero point five five, and B is zero point four five. Now this is set. Not quite yet. Now it's now it's set. As said, we want to implement a direct cyclic step, and we do that after the step one, after the static general step. In this case, we call it DC step direct cyclic. Continue. And now the cyclic time period is as said 0.2 with the nonlinear geometric of this is because Abacus isn't able to deliver nonlinear geometric behavior 
with the direct cycle algorithm, which is a case in this uh, specimen, but as it is to just demonstrate how the direct cycle cyclic uh, method is implemented, it's okay for now. We go through the tabs, um, incrementation tab. We will choose fixed for this time and the maximum number of increments of a thousand. Increment size is 0 0.2 and the maximum numbers of iteration is about five. We don't expect much iterations to be done because um, the, we don't have nonlinear um, behaving structures such as stamping or something like that. The Fourier terms can be um, increased to about 50 and the increment is just say there for the default value because it doesn't get much greater than 50 because the maximum is defined as 50. For the fatigue tab we include a low cycle fatigue analysis and the cycle increment size is usually 3 and 6 and the maximum number of cycles that's the number you want to specify and for this case we will do 10,000 cycles maximum or maybe a hundred thousand. The damage extrapolation tolerance is one and we let it for the default and all other par parameters are not changed as well. Now we have a direct cycle step and as you can see here the times is different. You have to take notice uh, that you also change the step one in a time period to 0 0.2. As we don't expect the, the specimen to debond at 700 newtons, we can choose here initially one and also maximum one, which is wrong because uh, the step time is 0 0.2. So you have to put 0 0.2 in there and the maximum increment size you can put about uh, to 100 because it um, probably will only get to one. Let's check the direct cycle step again, 0 0.2, maximum 1000. Ah, time increment size is 0 0.01. And this is the, this, the step time or the increment size um, which is used during one cycle. So 1000 times 0 0.001 gets me one and um, therefore is suitable for this case. Okay, as we can check in the help, you have to define for the fracture mechanics part of the direct cycle fatigue analysis, the Paris law curve. And in this case, you have um, the values for C1 and C2, which are used to calculate the crack onset and the values for C3 and C4 and they are used for crack propagation. We are in this study focused on the crack propagation, so we set C1 and C2 to zero. C3 and C4 uh, we will set um, all other values you know already. Those are the strain, the critical strain energy release ra rates as well as the eta as a BK exponent, which is also covered in the video one. In this case, we can check uh, here for the input of the data. The syntax is uh, as uh, follows, fracture criterion type fatigue, mixed mode behavior BK, so BK model and tolerance, um, we have to set here maybe 0 0.01 or something like that. Um, Okay, that's the actual input. I have to put in here some values, maybe 0 0.01. And those are the values as discussed earlier. Um, R1 and R2 are the functions for those two values, Gi fresh and Gi um, plastic maybe. Um, Gi fresh is used to limit the crack propagation to a threshold value and which in this case is zero. I forgot a comma here. A zero for this point. And um, the G, G plastic is 
the, the, the value for unstable crack propagation or catastrophic crack propagation where the direct cycle algorithm limits itself to extrapolate only one cycle. This being said, we can now uh, implement those um, values and I just copy them and go with my model keywords. Now I go down to the DC step and put them right before the end of the step. And there is one thing to notice that fracture criterion can only be used in combination with the debond um, keyword. So I go to my first step here and scroll down to just before here and copy the debond keyword and paste it in before the fracture criterion. Okay, now it's all set and it looks similar to the one here where the bond is also followed by fracture criterion. Okay, now hit OK. The last thing I want to address is the amplitude definition or rather the amplitude um, implementation as the displacement step uh, is propagated here that's also um, that's all set but the loading has to be combined with the amplitude here as it said required and we choose the amplitude one here look that there is seven kilonewtons defined here because as our amplitude says it goes from 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 times seven kilonewtons equals 700 newtons which is uh, what we want to define and one is the desired seven kilonewtons maximum force okay now you're all set and you can define your direct cyclic fatigue job and submit it